Monique Silva lived alone with her eight-year-old son in a one-bedroom apartment in San Jose, California. On the night of January 1st, 1993, when they crawled into bed and drifted off to sleep, they had no idea they were about to get the most terrifying visit of their lives. The woman was asleep, single mother, had her uh, small child with her there. She had a revolver, but the revolver was inside a lockbox. And the key was in the other room. I got a gun! San Jose police dispatcher handling the call was Barbara Liberty. She sounded frantic. I was trying to get more information from her. And it was difficult because she was really scared. Are they in the house now? Yes, yes. 428. Yes. Okay. All right, ma'am, calm down. Uh, can you hear them now? Yes, they started to be in my house. I told them I own a okay, fire. Do you know who it is? Monique Silva is 38. Huh? Okay, can you, do you know who it is? Uh, no. Okay. Right. Units from around the area were immediately dispatched to the scene, including Officer Kevin Cassidy. You can get a little complacent about it. I mean, there was 50 times that they dispatch us to a call that's not really nothing calls, but going over calls. But when they updated it that the guy was now inside the house and had broken down the front door, you start thinking, well, this isn't going to be the, the ordinary call. He said his name is Buddy. Okay, but you don't know who he is? No. I have no idea. Okay, did you see him? No. I'm in the room with my okay. son. I don't want to have to use this. Okay. Where in the house are you now? I'm, I'm in my bedroom. Okay. He can hear me. Please just send somebody here. Okay, just stay on the line with me and don't hang up, okay? Okay. Okay, where is the bedroom located in the house? Um, in the house and to the left. Please, please. Okay. You don't know where the suspect is. A lot of these times these people don't want to look and we don't blame them. Jesus, I bought a gun. Okay, you have a gun with yes, you right I now? Yes, I own a firearm. I have a 30. Okay, is it loaded right now? Yes, it's loaded. Okay, for me. what I need to have you do is I need to have to put the gun down, no, okay? No, no. Okay, ma'am. Okay. How when long is when the officers down? get on scene, you have to put the gun down because okay. they may mistake you and they may end up shooting you, okay? Okay, okay. When she told me she had the gun, I told her that she had to put it down, and she said no. In her situation, I don't blame her, but. I said, you know, someone's going to get hurt here. Is, is the bedroom door locked? No, no, it's a door. I'm terrified. I'm afraid. I don't know what to do. Okay, that's okay. What's your he name? His buddy. He's in the closet. He said, yeah, I'm stuck with him. He can't leave the apartment now. Okay, what, what, what's your name? My name is Monique. Monique? Okay, hi, Monique. Oh. My name is Barbara. I kind of wanted to make me a little more personal for her, not just a, a voice on the phone. Okay, kind of tell her, I'm here for you. I don't know what to do. Within four minutes, police got to the apartment complex, including Officer Brian Christian. We realized that it's huge, huge complex, kind of like a maze. So we asked the dispatcher if she could give us some kind of directions on how to get to a particular building. Oh, my God. What, what are you hearing right now? Okay, where, where in your apartment is the complex? Where is your apartment in the complex? Is your apartment? If they were coming in the front gate, where do they need to go? Uh, they need to turn. Well, as soon as they get into the parking lot, turn right. Turn, just fall in the parking lot. Right, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. At the point when she starts describing the water fountain and then starts going right, left, right, left in a 
kind of babbling manner. My sense of urgency grows because I think she is really hysterical. You didn't hear him leave or anything, Bill? Oh, I still okay. hear noises like it's sounding around. I don't know. It's like he busted my, my door down. He did bust your door down? Yes, that's what it sounded like. I said, who is it? I said, my God, who is it? And he said, I don't know. He called to me. And I said, well, I said, I own a firearm. And anyways, I said, you come in as well. Put your f***ing hand off. I said, I swear to God, stay where you are. Okay, I sent him in the closet with me. We're hiding him on Okay, did you put the gun down? But the gun is put down. screaming but I could also hear her son screaming and then the phone those touch tones and that's when I realized oh my god oh my god you know he's found her we heard a bunch of screams coming so we ran around to the correct apartment when I started hearing all the screams just the adrenaline level goes uh, shooting through the roof. It's very frustrating. I mean, you wish you could teleport yourself over to the other side of the phone and help out. If I could have done that, I would have. I heard the whole conversation and the thing that sent chills down my spine was when he said, I'm here to solve your problems. My first thought was, he's going to rape her. And then my second thought was, the gun's there, is he going to kill her too? building uh, at this point I can hear someone screaming at the top of their lungs the uh, lady was running out of the condo she was running a lot faster than I've ever seen anybody take stairs going down he saw us and came to a screeching halt told him to get his hands up which he didn't do just didn't seem like he was really all together there with the rest of us I said he has Ruben he has Ruben and I thought, how unfair. How dare you. I love my son more than anything in the world. We figured the gun's inside the apartment. That's not something that we want, especially with the little boy. There's no telling what's going to happen to him. The first officer who got in the apartment took the child away from the, the suspect. And the rest of us were pretty much tackling the guy taking him to the ground, taking care of business up there. I think the worst part of this whole thing was being on the other side of the phone and not being able to do anything. When the whole thing was finally over, I cried. I was very sad for her and her son, but I was so happy that they got there in time. After they apprehended him, they brought him down the stairs. And he, um, he looked at us. And to me, that meant, you know, you're going to pay the price. I'm going to come back to get you for putting me in jail. The suspect was subsequently convicted of burglary and using a victim as a shield and sentenced to five years in prison. Two years later, Monique and her 10-year-old son, Reuben, continue to undergo counseling to help them come to terms with what happened that night. It's hard. It, it changes your life. Because when you almost lose your life and um, think that you're going to lose your child, 
It changes everything. <laughs> oh my God, you see? I remember, I got so scared, I start crying. I realized this ain't a dream, not it's real life. But I'm feeling pretty good today. Shortly after the incident, Monique turned her handgun over to the police. It's kind of ironic because I always thought that owning a firearm was the ultimate protection, and ironically, I lived without it. I survived without it. You won the whole staff? I think that if you're in a situation and you need help, call 911. That's what they're there for. That was my lifeline. And the police, they were a godsend. The system works. Mommy loves you. Give me a kiss. Oh, get away. Oh. <laughs> You're a good kid.